What? I turned my head sharply to look at my wife, Carol. What did you just say? I asked, not believing what I had just heard. Dan, I know you're going to be mad, but I'm not happy right now, and I'm thinking about a trial separation, so I can get my head together and decide what I want, Carol told me as I stood on the porch grilling steaks. My friend Karen has a spare room, and she said I could stay with her for a while. When were you going to tell me, Carol, or were you just going to leave me a note on my pillow tonight? I said a little louder than I probably should have. Don't raise your voice, Dan. I don't want Andy to hear what we're talking about, she said. Andy, our six-year-old son. I knew you'd react this way, that's why I didn't want to bring it up until tonight. In other words, you've already decided to leave. Are you going to tell Andy, or are you going to leave it to me after you leave? I asked in a sarcastic tone. I'll tell him myself tonight before I go to bed, she replied. It's not forever, you know that. Hi, yes, you're moving in with that tramp Karen. I guess I should have seen it coming, I told her, getting angrier by the minute. Tomorrow, I'll prepare the papers. You'll sign them, and by Wednesday, I'll file them in court. What documents? Followed by her question. Hi, if you're going to leave, I want it to be a legal separation. Then when you don't come back, it will automatically become a divorce decree. That way we don't have to go through all the hassle twice, I told her. I don't want a divorce, Dan. Just a little time to myself to settle some things, that's all, honey, Carol replied. Bullshit, Carol, I spat back. I've been asking you to talk to me for the last four months, but you've been too busy with Karen and your new friends to make the time. Now you want to move in with your new friend Karen to do what you've probably wanted to do for the last six months, I was now yelling. But you won't do it with my blessing, and I'm certainly not going to stand by and get cuckolded by you or anyone else, I said, slamming the lid of the grill shut. It wasn't going the way Carol had expected. She knew Dan would be angry, but she thought she could convince him that this would be an experience for both of them. But now it was blowing up in her face. Dan, please, was all Carol could squeeze out before he raced away in anger, leaving her to watch the grill. Taking the steaks off the grill and putting them on a plate, she went looking for him. She found Dan upstairs in their bedroom. He was literally tossing all of her clothes and everything else and carrying them into the spare bedroom. Three a beat your shit and get the hell out. I don't care anymore, I yelled at her. I'll send the papers to your office, sign them, and get them back to Keith, the lawyer I'd been dealing with for the last six years. Don't worry, I'll take Andy to dinner so he doesn't have to watch his mother abandon him, I said, grabbing my coat and son before heading to my car. Karen, this is Carol, she began. Dan took it badly, really badly, and he's threatening to divorce me, Carol said, tears welling up in her eyes. I told you he wouldn't be happy, but he'll come around soon, so don't worry, Karen told her over the phone. Heck, in a couple weeks, he'll be begging you to come back, and then you'll have him right where you want him. I hope you're right, Karen, because right now he's ready to throw me out the door and start the divorce papers, she said hesitantly. I need some rest, but I don't want to break up my marriage, Carol said. I'll come and help you with your things, Karen told her. The sooner you are alone away from him, the sooner you will realize what you really want. With that, Karen drove up, helped Carol pack most of her things, and they were out of the house before Dan and Andy returned. I saw this coming a long time ago. Carol and I were both accountants and had met eight years ago when we were both auditing a troubled company. We each represented a different bank that had a controlling interest in the failed company. We worked together and ended up having lunch and dinner with each other almost every night. It took us a full week to finish our background checks, and by then we discovered that we really liked each other. Carol was about 5 feet 6 inches tall with brown hair and weighed about 175 pounds. She had a pretty face, but she was a little stocky. I was about 5 feet 8 inches tall, about 195 and at 22, I already had a spare tire around my waist from eating fast food every day. We were made for each other. Four months later, we were married, and eight months later, Carol found out she was pregnant. Carol had a difficult pregnancy, was bedridden for the last five months, and gained a ton of weight. By the time she gave birth to Andy, she had ballooned to almost 250 pounds. I, however, never said a word. I loved E regardless of E weight. We were a happy family until Carol heard two of her co-workers talking about her. She's such a beautiful woman, said one girl to the other. It's a pity she's as big as a house, 
I wonder if E's clothes are custom made from Omar's clothing store, the tent maker, she asked, laughing loudly. They may have found it funny, but Carol did not. Carol was crying in the bathroom when Karen walked in. Are you all right, Carol? She asked. Everyone thinks I'm a fat pig, she said, crying. If they only knew how hard it is for me to lose weight, they wouldn't be so mean, she sobbed. Look, girl, all you need to do is go on a good diet and join a gym, Karen told her. You're a beautiful girl hiding under all that flabbiness, that's all. You just need to make a decision and do it. And Carol did. I kept the books for a local gym and got a lucrative membership, so we joined a workout the following week. The gym had a kid's room, so we could take Andy with us after work when we both went. Carol was an obsessive woman and worked out six days a week while I could only manage three a week. Then Carol went to the doctor and got a prescription for weight loss pills. I didn't like it, but Carol was on a mission to lose weight. Eight months later, Carol had lost 125 pounds and looked fantastic. She had bought a whole new closet, and everyone, including the men at her job, said she looked great. That's when the trouble started. We were at a Christmas party in Carol's company when the shit hit the fan. Carol wore a dress that was more than a little revealing, and she was attacked all night by her male co-workers. She was over the moon at the attention she was getting. When a group of guys caught her under the mistletoe, she must have kissed a dozen before I came over and put a stop to it. Carol probably had too much to drink and didn't even notice that the guy's hands were on her while they were kissing. I took Carol's hand and told her it was time for us to leave. She didn't want to leave right away and made a little scene. Carol, I'm leaving right now, with or without you, I finally told her. She softened, but I could tell she was furious. On the way home, we had a big fight. Carol, you acted like some cheap tramp today. I, like everyone else, saw those guys wrapping their arms around you, and you did nothing to stop them, I yelled. It was just innocent fun, nothing special, she replied. Not from where I was standing, I replied. How would you like it if I kissed and grabbed some girl, I asked, even though I knew she was too drunk to listen to reason. That night, Carol felt sick. Luckily, she had time to take off her new dress before she threw the cookies away. The next morning, she looked awful and apologized to me, saying it would never happen again. But it did. I just wasn't around for the next time. Carol started stopping after work on Wednesdays for a bachelorette party. There were seven girls, some married, some not, who stopped for a couple drinks at Tony's after work. It started out with her having to be home by 6.30, but that soon stretched to 7.30 and finally to almost 9 o'clock in the evening. By the time Carol got home, Andy was already in bed and I was not in the best of moods. When we first got married, we had sex like teenagers and couldn't get enough of each other. Now it seemed that if we did it once a week, it would be considered frequent. One thing was for sure. When Carol came home Wednesday night, she was ready to run at a trot, and tonight was no exception. Neither of us had what you would call much sexual experience when we first got married, and we were a little wary of trying new things from the beginning. We learned from each other what each of us liked, and through a few X-rated moves, we added many things to our repertoire. Now, however, Every week when Carol came home, she seemed eager to try something new and exciting, on most of which I wondered where she got the idea from. She drank more than usual and arrived later than usual, but she knew how to put me in a good mood. She climbed off the bed between my legs, pulled down my boxers, and started kissing my body. After dinner, Andy and I went back to the empty house. That bitch Karen, I thought to myself. Ever since Carol lost the weight, Karen's been up to something with her. No wonder her husband left her. She was just a whore, and now she's turning my wife into one, too. I tucked Andy in and read him a story before bed. When he asked about his mother, I just told him that mom was visiting and would be home in a couple days. But I didn't believe it for a minute. I walked down the stairs and called my mom and brought her up to speed. Mom, can you watch Andy during the day until I find someone permanent? I asked. Honey, Carol will recover and be back by the end of the week. You know her. She can't be away from Andy for more than a few hours before she goes crazy, Mom told me. But I'll be there before you go to work and look after him. I hoped she was right. But I wasn't as sure as my mom was. On Monday, I contacted Keith and told him that Carol had left me. I want to be fully protected, including permanent custody of Andy. I want it written down and spelled out in unambiguous terms that if one of us acts in a way that a married spouse should not, 
the other gets 65-35% of our assets. I think she's trying to cheat me, and I want to be covered, I tell Keith. I want it to have a 60-day expiration date, after which it becomes a decree of divorce. And can you do that by tomorrow? I asked. Aren't you in too much of a hurry, Dan? She just left, and you're already ready to write the divorce papers, he asked me. Carol has been planning this for a long time, and maybe this will bring her to her senses. If not, I don't want to lose everything I've worked for just because she wants to try some new tool, I told him. Okay, Dan, I'll do it tonight, and tomorrow she'll be serviced at work. Anything else? Not that I can think of. I just need to draw a line in the sand for her to realize what she could lose, that's all. Also, Keith, I'll need to draw up two more agreements, but we have a little time for those. I'll fax you what I need later this week. When Carol arrived at work on Tuesday, she was a little frustrated. She had never seen Andy and Dan for so long in the last eight years. When she returned from lunch, she heard a man waiting for her in her office. Carol Spencer? He asked. Yes, I'm Carol. What can I do for you? You've been served, he said, handing her a heavy paper envelope. Carol spent the next half hour discussing all the terms and division of property described in the separation decree, although it looked more like actual divorce papers. It stated that Dan would get temporary but full custody of Andy, and Carol would be allowed visitation with reasonable notice. By the time she finished reading, she was more hurt than angry. I've been gone for two days and Dan has already written off our marriage, she said to herself. She tried to call Dan, but his secretary said he would be out all day and his cell phone switched to voicemail. At that moment, Dan was home, changing locks, dealing with the division of their finances, and crossing Carol's name off his insurance and 401k. By four o'clock, I was done with all the chores and turned on my cell phone. Damn, I said to myself, 12 messages from Carol. I deleted them all. I had dinner with Andy at my mother's house and told her what I had done. Carol is mad as hell, Dan. I'd be pissed if I were in her shoes. Mom, I replied, I can't fix this marriage alone, especially since she won't listen to reason, so I've upped the ante. She started this mess on her own, but I swear to God I'll end it if I find out she's cheating on me. I used to trust her, but now I wouldn't believe a word she says. So right now, I'm protecting my son and myself. If we get back together, it will be great. If not, I'll hold all the cards. Son, I've never seen this side of you. Remind me to never get on your bad side, Mom said with a laugh. Carol stopped in front of her house and tried to use the key. What the hell, she said to herself, before she noticed that it was a new lock. Damn it! She picked up her cell phone and dialed Dan's number again just before it went to voicemail. So she left him another message. Now it's done properly, I thought as I looked at my checklist. Now all I have to do is wait. Wednesday morning, Carol was in Dan's office. My credit cards aren't working, and when I stopped by on my way to work to pick up a prescription, I was told I no longer have insurance. Just covering my bases, Carol, remember? You left me. I'm paying for all the house and Andy's expenses, but you're going to have to take care of yourself from now on, so you and I won't have any financial problems to argue about. Dan, you let this get completely out of hand, Carol shouted. I just needed some alone time, that's all. Leaning over the table, I said in my most serious and nonchalant tone, Carol, do you see the word stupid tattooed on my forehead? I may not be the smartest guy in the world, but I wasn't born yesterday. Karen has your head so turned that you can't seem to find your ass with both hands. You think you can go out and act like you're single again without any repercussions. Think again. The first time I find out you've broken your marital vows, we're done. Hell. You've probably already done that, so I don't even know why we're having this conversation right now. I'm so mad at you right now, I'm not thinking straight, so I think it would be best if you just leave so I don't say anything that would throw what's left of our marriage down the toilet. With those words, I sat down. Carol was shocked and became angry herself. You can't dictate to me like a little kid. I'm an equal partner in this marriage, so fuck you, she spat out. Well, in the last six months, that hasn't happened very often either, but I guess you're getting all you can get on the side now anyway, I said loud enough for Carol to hear. With those words, she turned and walked out. I knew she hadn't done anything yet, but was close to it. You see, I started following her around on Wednesday about a month ago. There was a lot of kissing and hand play, but that's all there was.
I knew she would be thrilled living with Karen, so I wanted to make sure Carol understood exactly what would happen if she cheated on me. The first two weeks were rough. Carol made it a rule to visit Andy, but never spoke more than two words to me. I still kept an eye on her, but nothing new happened. She was still seeing Karen and her friends, but not just on Wednesdays, but at least four nights a week. Looks like someone is trying to catch up, I said to myself as I looked at the report. However, I had found a nanny of sorts to take care of Andy, a girl fresh out of college who couldn't find a job. Beth was a 23-year-old blonde, about 5 feet 9 inches tall, skinny build. She had gotten her degree but could only find part-time work, so when she saw my ad for a nanny, she jumped at the chance. Beth came from a large family and knew how to care for little boys. She had two younger brothers. So we came to an agreement on pay and hours, and she moved in the next day. Beth worked as a waitress at the family's mid-priced restaurant on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. On other nights, we all ate together. After a few weeks, Andy became very casual with Beth, especially when she read to him before bedtime. Beth, I really appreciate you going the extra mile with Andy. Now that his mom isn't with him, he needs all the stability in life that I can give him, I said with the best smile I could muster. I know about you and your wife. Your mother has filled me in on all the details in case Carol comes and tries to grab him, Beth told me. I just can't believe she'd just leave you like that. I've only known you a short time, but you're one of the most caring men I've ever met, and I can see that you love Andy to death. I guess Carol got confused about what really matters and let others convince her that the grass is greener on the other side of the fence, I replied. Well, either way, it will be over in 40 days, and it can't come too soon for me. I didn't realize that there would be a major shift in my life, and that shit would hit the fan in less than a week. Tonight was magical, and my head is spinning with all the things I wish I could do right now, but to my dismay, it's not going to happen tonight, I told her. Maybe if things were different, but they aren't. So I need to take a cold shower and go to bed, I told Beth, kissing her cheek as she hugged me. It was two in the morning when I felt Beth climb into bed with me. I could tell by the warmth she was radiating that she was naked. I wanted to say something, but she put a finger to my lips. I know we can't do anything today, I just want to be near you, that's all, she said as she hugged me. The next morning I woke up alone. I found Beth downstairs, dressed, making breakfast for the three of us. No one said anything. Carol was out of her mind. Here I am trying to figure out what I want out of life with Dan, and he's already kicked me to the curb and found some whore, she said, slamming her palm on the table. She had made the mistake of mentioning this to Karen, who had told her that all husbands cheat on their wives and that tonight they should go out and celebrate her newfound freedom. She didn't feel like going anywhere and partying tonight, and she really wanted to talk to Dan, but he was always at some other damn meeting. Carol and the group met up at Tony's again, and it was packed as usual. After a couple drinks, most of their company headed home, but not Carol and Karen. A couple of good-looking guys were trying to claim her, and Karen was already making out with one of them. The other guy had her on the dance floor, and when the slow dance started, she melted into his arms. His warm hands slid all over her body, and Carol felt herself slowly succumbing to his flirtations. It had been a long time since she had been with a man, and this guy was stunningly handsome, had the body of a Greek god, and wanted her as much as she wanted him. She never stopped him when he kissed her while dancing. She never once stopped him when he led her to the corner of the dance floor and pinned her against the wall. But she should have stopped him when he ran his hands under her dress. Yes, she should have stopped him, especially since Dan's hired private investigator was taping the whole thing. The four of them went back to Karen's place, and although Carol was now lying naked on the bed next to him, she finally came to her senses. I can't, I just can't, she said. I'm still married, and I still love my husband no matter what, she said, ignoring his objections. So he left her alone, and Carol took one of two cold showers that night. On my computer screen, I saw pictures of Carol, the last one showing the four of them entering Karen's apartment. I emailed them to my attorney and told him to get the papers together, but put them off until Monday. It looks like she's finally made up her mind, I said sadly, because I really wanted to meet Carol again. But now, it was no longer possible. 
I'll take care of the Asian project myself, I told my superiors the next day. I need to get away and this will give me time to clear my head and get my life in order, I told them. Dan, all set to launch on the 12th, which is a week from next Tuesday. Can you be ready to go? They asked. Give me two days to get my affairs in order and get settled with my apartment so I have somewhere to send my stuff, I told them. I have two more people to talk to today, and if everything goes according to plan, I'll be ready. That same day, I assigned my staff to take care of all my unfinished projects. I sketched out the paperwork to give my mom power of attorney and told Keith to file the paperwork for Carol the following Monday. I'd be safe in the air while she was being served, I said sadly. I went home that evening to a house that would not be mine when I returned from across the ocean, and I was very sad. Carol and I had chosen it together, and there were so many good memories associated with it, and now they would all be gone. I was being unaccustomedly quiet at dinner, and Beth thought she was the one who had done something wrong. No, I just have a lot on my mind, and we'll talk after Andy goes to bed, I told her. By ten o'clock, there was silence in the house, and we were both staring at each other. Beth spoke first. What's the matter, Dan? If it's about the other night, I'm sorry, and it won't happen again, I promise, she told me. Beth, that's not the point. Remember that party the company threw me a couple weeks ago? Well, I've decided to do some overseas work myself, and Andy and I will be leaving early Monday morning, I told her. And I have an important question for you, I began, seeing Beth start to cry. Do you want to come with us? She turned from crying eyes to a smile. Damn yes, she said, throwing herself into my arms. Do you have a valid passport, Beth? I asked. I renewed it last year when I went on a cruise with my college friends, she told me. Well, that's fine then. You'll need to have everything packed by Saturday because they ship all our stuff ahead of time. Leave exactly enough clothes to last through the weekend and travel clothes for Monday. You can tell your family and friends, but I don't want Carol to find out until we're in the air. I'm not sure it's totally legal to just take Andy with me and leave, but I'll do it anyway. I'll answer any questions when we get back, I told her. That same evening, I met with my mother and explained everything to her, including giving her my power of attorney. Carol will probably be okay Monday afternoon, but I still want you to put the house on the market next week. Keith will send you a copy of the papers I'm sending Carol, and if she has any questions, just tell her to talk to Keith. Are you sure that's what you want, Dan? Don't you want to try to work it out with her? Mom asked. She made her own bed, and now she can sleep in it with whoever she wants, I said. Are you taking Beth with you? She asked, trying to get the last phrase out of her son. I don't know exactly where we're going, but she makes me smile and keeps me sane. Other than that, I might have some real feelings for her, and that's all I'm going to say. We'll be there Sunday night so you can say goodbye to Andy, I tell her. On Monday, Carol was trying to get Dan on the phone when she was told at work that he was busy on some special outside project but would give him a message. So what the hell is he doing? She thought, trying unsuccessfully to reach him. Carol Spencer? The man asked. She nodded. You've been served, he said, holding out an envelope to her. Now what? She asked, opening the envelope. There was a short note from Dan saying that he had made a decision. I hope you have a wonderful life, was how he ended it. And then she saw the pictures. Oh shit, was all she could say. Where the hell did he get those pictures, she thought. That son of a bitch must have been following me, she said as she flipped through them. They weren't the kind of pictures you wanted to see your wife with another man. But I've never slept with him. I have to make him realize that, she told herself. Dan is out of the country for four or five months. He left with Andy on Monday morning, Dan's mother told Carol. He can't take Andy away from me, especially out of the country, she shouted. I'll take him to court and make sure he goes to jail, she shouted. Carol, Dan has full custody of Andy, remember? You gave up that right when you left to find yourself, she reminded her. To say you screwed up royally would be a gross understatement. You had a great marriage, but I think you wanted more, and now you have nothing, Dan's mother told her. I have to talk to him and explain that things are not what they seem, Carol said, sobbing. I still love him, and I have never gone to bed with anyone else. Carol, I've seen the pictures, and if my husband were alive and doing what you're doing, I'd divorce him too. If I were you, I would write him a letter and explain what you need, and I will make sure he gets it. 
Carol did a good job of making her point. In that alcohol played a big part and that she stopped it and hasn't gone all the way with anyone since she left. Carol said she still loved me and would wait for me to get back to her. I replied short and to the point. Carol, you haven't been my wife since you lost weight last year. It's like you've gotten too good for me. You were absorbing all the men's attention and making me feel used on Wednesday night when you finally decided to come home to me. You were all hot and horny and all you wanted was good sex, not to make love to your husband. So now you and Karen can sleep with whoever you want. I told you that Karen would eventually break us up, but you knew that wasn't true. Andy, Beth and I are building a new life based on love and trust. You can see Andy anytime you want. Just get your computer's camera modem and I'll set it up. Sign the papers, because mom's putting the house on the market this week. There's no chance we'll ever get back together, so don't expect me to change my mind. I hope you finally got what you were looking for, Carol, and are happy, although I never wanted that to happen. Carol knew Dan was right. She was a stupid idiot for listening to all her good friends who knew what they were talking about. That's probably why they all got divorced. She was going to fight until she got Dan's letter and finally signed the papers. The irony was that six months later, Carol was back to the 175 pounds she had started with two years earlier, but no longer had Dan. I was happy. The job was a bit hard because of the language barrier, but I got through it. Andy picked up a word here and there and managed to communicate with all the guys he played with. Beth took care of Andy and set up routines for our free time. Places to see what to do, as she put it. I still remember that night a few months ago. It was just after we had arrived in the country and we were all a little tense. Andy was struggling with going to bed, my program wasn't going as smoothly as it should have, and Beth was feeling a little overworked. She walked into the office and kissed the back of my head, which brought a smile to my face. She leaned over and took my hand and led me into the bedroom where one candle stood on each side of the bed. We undressed and got into bed. Let's just say that heaven and earth came together that night. We had tender love sex for the first time. For the next few months, we did whatever the other wanted, as long as it didn't involve pain. We were more than happy. Five months later, my mom met us at the airport. She was happy to see us all, especially Andy. On the way home, she glanced every now and then at Beth, who seemed pleased. How far have you gotten? She asked. Beth stepped back a little. Three months. How do you know I hardly show my face? She replied. You both looked too happy, like the cat that ate the canary, she told us. Two weeks later, we were married, and six months later, Rhonda was born. When Beth said she wanted to go to the gym to get rid of the extra weight from childbirth, I looked like I'd seen a ghost. Two days later, I informed her that I had hired her a personal trainer and that she would be doing all the workouts. No point in going through all this crap a second time, I thought to myself.